Wednesday, Arena of the Mind, Charles Dixon. This is Rob Parks. Obviously, you know my Twitter is uh, at underscore Charles Dixon, and my, his is... My Twitter is at rparksjr85. You know, the last episode we made predictions about the Denver game against Atlanta. I did not know that uh, Peyton was going to go throw three interceptions in the first quarter. So, uh, I did lose that one. So, yeah. congrats on picking the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, I told you. So I, don't, I still can't believe George you did that. Gunn, throwing in the double coverage. Why? I mean, I don't know what he was doing, honestly. Maybe he went to Onyx and Magic City like the night before. <laughs> Hit the little strip club. <laughs> but the crazy thing. See, I was going to say this for last, but uh-huh. after the game, you probably all have heard already, is that um, Michael Turner went out. Got a DUI, um, uh, got pulled over, driving too fast. I think he was going, uh, I think, 97 and 60, <laughs> something like that. Um, you were, And then you got tested at a blood, I mean, what's it called? Blood alcohol. Blood alcohol was over the level and um, was in jail. It's probably way over the limit. Um, yeah, what kind of car was he driving, you don't know? I have no idea. Probably, but probably something fast. What is wrong with NFL players that just can't get a cab to go home. I mean, but it's the allure of having like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. They want to drive it, right. you know? So that's probably why he drove. But just get a cab, dude, or a limo, car service, something. Like, in Atlanta, you can get that easily, man. He made over what? What? Almost $294,000. That game. A game. That game. A little bit over that. And you couldn't afford thirty dollar cab ride home per game. I don't get not it. not for a year, not for six games. One game. That's the salary for one game. Get a cab. You can't afford a cab. Cab costs like forty bucks. Something like that. Some. It, well, it don't matter what it costs. He, he can easily pay for it. And another thing, like you could ask any female that was there, like, "Hey, you want to take me home?" <laughs> she don't know that you are literally asking. Her to take you home just right, to drop you, you off because you're too when drunk. You, yeah, get home, get out the car, walk inside. She'll be hurt, but it's still something that's, I guess, convenient. You come up with it. I mean, come on now. Disclaimer no. to everybody: don't drink and drive. Don't do no, it. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's not worth it, man. DUI is not worth it. I came across a lot of Los Angeles news uh, in my Facebook. Twitter, Hoop Doctors, all the stuff that I look up on Google and things like that. Mm. Um, the Lakers would owe $94 million in luxury tax if they re-signed Dwight Howard in the 2012-2013 season. You know, you got Kobe making 27 mil. You got Powell making 19 mil. Their payroll this year will be a wow. whopping $100 million. Wow. Like, it's crazy. Like, that's that's crazy. I mean, I'm not surprised though. I mean, Jerry Buss is going to pay that luxury tax because they will be resigning Dwight Howard. Where else is he going to go? I mean, nowhere else. I mean, nowhere he's else. A, he's he's happy in LA. He's tweeting like a he's fool. Tweeting like a fool. Tweeting fool. He's tweeting like crazy. Before before he got traded, he wasn't tweeting any for months. Yes, he was quiet on Twitter. Now he's tweeting. There, he's responding to everybody. He's happy again. Playful Dwight. Yeah, back. So, he's trying to be playful again. Try to get everybody to like him right. again. You know, he got the trunk fit. Got all this gear from Little Wayne. He's oh, buying boy. snapbacks. This man is a big <laughs> child. I, I just have to trunk say, fit. It, it's the, the biggest child I know in the NFL and the NFL NBA is Dwight Howard. I, I just. Hands down. I don't care how old he is. It's just, that was another bad decision. Trunk fit, really? Come on now. Yeah. But if you give it free, get it for free. Hey, I don't, hey. But, you know, it's because of the luxury tax penalties increased next year by the CBA. Um, it's just that they, it's a potential of $94 million. I know you're talking about bus will pay it, but $94 million is a lot of money to anybody. I mean. That's a lot of that's just tax. That's not even yeah. counting the salaries that. But they're gonna make that back though. That's the thing. They will. I mean, they make it back through their either TV revenue, stadium revenue, mm-hmm. endorsements, staples. Right. I mean, it's LA. They they make it back. They don't care. He always plays luxury tax every year. I mean, it's it's good look for all the other NBA owners out there looking to pick up players that are on the, the Lakers right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gonna be like shopping at the Goodwill next in two thousand. The next summer, I mean, after this season's summer, because 
It's just the 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 Lakers will have to drop people. They'll have to give away contracts. They're gonna have to give players away for money, draft picks away for money, just to be able to pay that luxury tax. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just they could be picking the other teams will be picking up other players for a bargain price in the summer of two thousand. I got a question so. for you. How long do you think Steve Nash is going to play? He's Steve like Nash 39. played two, three years. He's 39, probably plays at 42, you know. I think so he, he might play longer than that. I mean, he can. He, he Him and Grant Hill are on some type of. It's like an anomaly, man. Uh, like, they, they're on some type of thing that I don't know. They yeah, found the youth. Found the youth. They drink it every day. They get drunk off that. Because, for real, because it just doesn't make any sense how they just keep going and going and going. Grant Hill makes young players look stupid. Yeah, and he's he's still old. balling, man. The Grand Hill came into the league in ninety four, nineteen ninety four. Yes, that's one of the first jerseys I ever had in my life. A Grand Hill jersey, a Grand Hill red Detroit Pistons jersey. Oh yeah, that Remember was that jersey. That was the ugliest logo in the world. <laughs> that Detroit Pistons. I was logo like nine was or eight. Horrible. I was like eight years old. So he's still playing. He is still playing. I didn't. I haven't even started playing basketball yet. When he started playing, oh no, I have. I was playing ball. Yeah. I was still, but you know, still talking about the Lakers. Metal World Peace, this guy, always saying reckless stuff. I'm not gonna say this is reckless. This might be something just to have to motivate your team. He said that he thinks the Lakers will go 73 and nine. Just let that marry. Nah, for a second. nah. He said, we definitely want to beat the Bulls record and go 73-9. and nine. That's definitely something that I want to do. Who, whoever is out there at the beginning of the season, then we got to go get. It is simple as that. We just have to go get it. I mean. Whoever's out there beginning of the season, meaning free agents? No, just meaning people they got to play against first. Oh, so they're they, the talking about just blowing people out. Well, if Dwight Howard doesn't start the season, they're blowing people out. Like they're going to blow. If they, he doesn't, or if he doesn't? If he, if he doesn't, he probably won't start at the beginning of the season. And they're going to still blow people out. Because mm-hmm. remember, Powell can still run center. Yeah. And with Steve Nash running that offense, it's going to be a different Laker team. Man. They're going to be running people off the court. Man. I don't know. I, I can't. Off the court. And then when Dwight this, comes back, it's going to be. Do you think this team is better than that uh, Bulls team? No, no way. So how, 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 how would they defeat? Well, record. I don't know. I got to see him play, man. But my Jordan was locked in that year, man. Yeah. 95, 96. I was 10 years old, and I remember that very vividly. Cause, yeah, because you know right now the Lakers are known as the paper champs. You yeah. Know? Everybody's talking about they look good on paper. Mm-hmm. Blake Griffin, they look good on paper. Kevin Durant, they look good on paper. But everybody's just waiting to see that first game, first preseason game at that. Just not even preseason game. The first game when they're all together. On the court at the same time, it's gonna be crazy. It's like a, that's an all star team, literally. They've all made the all star team before, all the starting five, yes, they multiple have. times. Even Ron Artest made a world peace. Excuse me, made a world peace. That's what he wants to be called. We're gonna respect We're gonna it, call man. Respect, respect your wishes. So, Meta, and I know we're hitting y'all with a lot of LA news. More so, a little quick hit: the Los Angeles people that the entertainment group that owns the Los Angeles Kings, LA Galaxy, Staples Center. It's being the entertainment group is being up for sale. The company announced yeah, it. A A G. Uh, yes, A G mm-hmm. announced it Tuesday that they're going to be trying to sell the Kings and the ownership of the Staples Center. So, Staples Center was open in 1999. Uh, it's a great, probably started a downtown kind of. Nokia LA and all the stuff downtown renovation was started with the Staples Center so it's something big it's very important to the LA community so hopefully somebody can buy it or help own the Kings or something but it's Ma- really Magic Johnson might buy it hey shoot <laughs> big ups to Magic Johnson Knowing he him, just opened he just might. a school for people that dropped for high school dropouts in Atlanta and it's free this man does great things and if he's not a if He's not one of your role models. I don't know. Oh yeah, who he has his else na- to pick. He has his like, name on stuff like out in L.A. L.A. Like LA where, my fitness, where my family, where my family lives. Burger, everything. Like, twenty four hour fitness. Magic Johnson. Twenty four hour TGI Fridays. Magic Johnson. Magic theaters. Johnson theaters. It's just here's the Magic Johnson theaters in uh, what you call it in Harlem. Right. It's, he's just. I know we got off 
topic, but just Magic Johnson is just he always needs an undivided attention about all the great things that he does. Businessman. You know to the fullest. Switching, switching it real quick. I don't know if you've been following baseball. You know, yes. is my Mike Trout and Miguel Cabrera going up for the AL MVP this year? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a, it's it seems like it's a tight race according to all the highlights and things like that. But you know, we're gonna take it to the numbers because we because people say numbers never lie. You know, Mike Trout right now has batting 327, 27 home runs and seventy seven RBIs. You know, Miguel Cabrera has is batting. 333, 40 home runs, and 129 RBIs. Right. So, by the numbers, Miguel should win. Mike Trout, Mike Trout won't win. He's a rookie. He'll get rookie of the year for sure. Yeah. So, I mean. But Miguel, Miguel Cabrera probably has that locked up, man. Yeah. And he's, he could be the first person in 45 years to win the triple, tri- triple crown. For everybody that doesn't know what the triple crown is, that's when a batter – Leads the league in home runs, runs batted in, RBIs, ribbies, whatever y'all call it, and batting average. So right now he's on pace to do that. Yesterday he had two home one, who two home runs, and a big grand slam in the eighth inning. So Miguel's doing his thing this year. And yes, Detroit Lions are looking real good. So Detroit Tigers, sir. Detroit Tigers <laughs> getting all mixed getting up. Getting mixed up. You know we just watched the Lions the other day. Yeah, so you know? yeah. Pretty still still a lion, tiger, you know, almost. Bears, oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> almost, the sa- almost the same thing, lions and tigers, you know. But, you know, to switch it up, we have to pick. We already talked about the dummy of the week. That's Michael Turner. But the NFL disappointment so far, who do you think it is? <sighs> Probably my boy Chris Johnson, man. And uh, I got a story about Chris Johnson from the Tennessee Titans this summer. I work out at the weight room at the ESPN Wire World of Sports Complex pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big up, big up to my job pretty regularly. Um, in July, a lot of days when I was in there, Chris Johnson was in there. I got to talk to him, got to meet him, mm-hmm. seen, seen him work out and all that. Right. Pretty, pretty cool guy. You know, I'm thinking he, I'm thinking he's coming into the season like beast mode, like the way he was working out. He was in there with his brother or his friend. I don't know who he was, but they're in there every day. Florida boys, Orlando boys. You know, that's why they're here. And he's working out every day, so now he starts the season off doing nothing like twelve carries, twenty one yards, one game. Like what? And how? He, how? I, I and then he called. He called out his teammates. Like they had to do their job. They're not blocking for him, which could be the case. But I mean, you fast, bro. You got to find a way. He fast. He yeah, he needs to find a way. I, you got to find I a way. Totally man. agree. That's by far the biggest disappointment. You know, other people can throw out there Mark Sanchez, but he has he, they no, I mean, won, he won a game. The, he won one game. He played you know, good. I really can't and no one else really pops in my head. I know a ton of fantasy people are upset with picking Chris Johnson right now. Oh, especially yeah, I'm, last I'm, I'm week. glad I didn't pick him. Nineteen carries about it. twenty one yards. That doesn't even make <laughs> any sense. That's a backup that's, that's like one yard that's a carry. That's a fifth string running back. That's like one, well, fifth string. In college. Will never see the field. Playing in the NFL for the first time ever. And I, I bet he could probably put up those numbers. If you gave a fifth string running back on Savannah State, who got blown out <laughs> multiple times uh, on the field, I bet you they probably, with 19 carries, have more than 21. And, I, and I, can't, I can't say he just doesn't care. I mean, he got paid a couple years ago, as you might know. And he hasn't produced since. And he, had, <laughs> and he fell off all the way. Off the cliff. Drop. Drop. And I, I can't say he doesn't care because he was kind of passionate about his teammates not blocking for him, his offensive line, you know, the quarterback play. His teammates need to do their job. That's what he said. But you got to do your job, my dude. You got to get some more yards. I expect for him to bounce back. Yeah, he should bounce back. He should bounce back. He's, he wouldn't, he's but fast. As people that like watching the NFL, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't shout out, you know, Steve Sable. You know, he died uh, at age 69 uh, yesterday due yes. to brain cancer. Yes. Um, he revolutionized the way football fans consumed the NFL. Mm-hmm. It was NFL films. NFL films. I know I've watched it all day. Just Man. sat there and just not moved, mm-hmm. and it's just something. His voice, everything was just great. You know that access, the sound, the pictures just equals greatness. Oh yeah, from uh, Miss Sable. So, you know, those we, sound bites are classic. Classic. Everything, anything. Hard knocks. All the, all those NFL shows that people do now, all pretty much 
uh, copying the, br- the blueprint of NFL films and what Steve Sable was thinking and put on film for everyone to see. So pretty much, um, he will be missed, but never forgotten. Um, Serena of the Mind, Charles Dixon, at Charles Dixon on Twitter, and um, Rob Parks, at R. Parks Jr., 85. And you know, if, you know, tweet us, holla at us, man, mention this. Do something, do something today, do something that will change the world. And if you can't change the world, spark the mind of someone that will change the world. Do something. We got to go back to work, was man. a Tupac quote. Yeah. So have a good one. Enjoy your Wednesday. We'll see y'all on Friday. Talk about NFL. And I went from ass shit to classic. Oh, five mash in the gas on they asses.